All right, welcome to D&D Extra. It's for our wonderful, awesome $2 and above patrons. And uh, we love you. You're not, <laughs> it almost sounds insulting to say $2 and up patrons. <laughs> <laughs> You're worth way more than $2, but we thank you for your any contribution at all. Yes, but the dollar <laughs> patrons don't get this. Ah. Yeah. That's, it's worth the extra dollar. Well, we only get 60 cents of the first dollar, and then we get like 95 cents of every other dollar. You told me 20 cents, so you're keeping 40 cents on me? Dang, come in. <laughs> Say it out loud. No. Uh, but anyway, uh, and I tell you what, after doing my taxes and uh, doing our taxes for the podcast, definitely appreciate the patrons. So. Oh, definitely. I've done yeah. four taxes so far, and I'm getting ready to do the fifth. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired of doing taxes. So anyway, so uh, tonight we're going to definitely talk about episode five. We're going to look at the um, at the uh, press release, and then David has a non-survivor topic that he wants to talk about. But uh, thank you for watching the D and D extra, and thank you for being a patron. So the uh, the title is "The Devils We Know," and then the CBS press release says the castaways drop their buffs. And switch things up. Okay, we knew that already, right? Yep. And one castaway feels all alone in the game following the tribe switch. So I'm going to let you say what you think is going to happen first. Obviously, picking a, uh, who's going home is ridiculous. In fact, I, I love what you did on your power rankings. Tell them what you did on your power rankings. Uh, since I have no idea, and Colton admitted he has no idea either because we haven't seen the new tribes, I theme my power rankings as who can survive an unlucky swap. Right. Because it always seems like somebody gets put on the outs. And the odds are that it's going to be one of the bronze, I think, because there's only three of them. Yeah. And the odds are two of them are going to be together. One of them is going to be separate. And I, I don't think Scott would feel on the outs. I definitely don't think Jason would. Mm-mm. I think it could be Sydney. Oh, really? Okay. Especially after the medical situation she went through last week. And then so many years <coughs> later, she's suddenly on a tribe where she, she's looking at pre-merged, pre-swap alliances. Right. So I think she could definitely feel... Out of luck, because she's going to see them talking together and them talking together. So I hope it's not that way. I hope the brawn get put together. But I think she, I think the other ones have a better chance of being on a tribe with someone they know. Yeah. Um, but after what she went through last week, it was so draining. It's such an emotional and you know debilitating episode that I think she could be the one that falls into that category. Yeah. That's why I actually ranked her at the bottom, unfortunately, so I'd get the most points if it is her. Yeah. But I don't know. She she may be the person in the middle that causes the vote to go one way or the other yeah good for her if she does that's true all right so the castaways drop their buffs switch things up we're both pretty confident it's not going to be a merge right because of the next sentence well the second half of the sentence and one castaway feels all alone in the game following the tribe switch right well there you go they're going to split the tribes to two tribes of six and then there's going to be this odd person so who do you think who do you think it's going to be well, that's who knows. It's it's completely one in thirteen. So, which is a good reason not to do a driving prediction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like uh, who the heck knows who that person is. But what I think is going to happen to that person is I think that person is safe from tribal council. So I think they're going to go back to someone else's. Camp. Absolutely, you're probably yeah. absolutely right because I'm buying into the red herring. So go yeah, ahead. okay. They're going to go. They're going to go to someone's camp and be all alone for the next two or three days. While the other two tribes, like they're going to have to leave right then. The other two tribes are going to do the reward challenge. And then they'll do their days. And then they'll do a, uh immunity challenge. And that person will be at their tribe, whoever goes to immunity, cha- whoever goes to tribal council. This is my prediction. That the lone person will meet them at their camp that night after they vote somebody off. Hmm. So does all that make sense? The lone person, okay, the lone person goes off by themselves for three days. The other two tribes, the two tribes compete all the way. The last player, the last person picked. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Sorry. The person who gets the TV off. The TV is still on. The person who gets the odd colored rock, or who gets the the white buff or something. Yeah, Yeah. odd buff. Right. So, oh, speaking of buffs. Wow, that did would be quite a twist, especially with 13 people. All right. Did you get your buffs? I did. Okay. Gracie's already inspected them for me. She, nice. she opened it up when I got it. So you're following what red herring? That the person alone will get voted out. 
Oh, really? You think they'll just have to go home right then? No, I think the person that feels alone won't even go to tribal council. Like you said, they'll probably join the tribe that uh, that, that loses somebody. Oh, you th- wait, but but that's what I said, and you said I know, that- that's what I'm. No, I was thinking that they would go to a tribe, but their tribe would win, and they wouldn't even go to tribal council. But I like your th- idea better that they get off by themselves, but that's also punishing. Well, how would they go to a tribe? They just, the last one picked. So one tribe's going to be short. Oh, maybe they, they were going to do this this week anyway, but they were <coughs> people last week. Oh, so, I don't know. Unless they have yeah. a special plan yeah. for one person, like you just said, they should have not voted out somebody last week and gone with the swap. Well, either that or they moved the swap up a week. Yeah. It's, it's almost like it's feeding into your theory because why would you do a swap at an odd number? Well, it's it kind of cool, though. I know no. it makes more sense what you're saying, the way you're thinking. It also surprises them because they're certainly not expecting a tribe swap on right. an odd number, right? And it's way too early for a merge, I would think. Yeah. And it, even three tribes, again, would be odd number because it's, yeah. it's 13 still. Yeah. So they're not expecting this at all. Right. And so then the twist is one of you isn't going to be on a tribe. So you're going to be by yourself for three days. Oh, that's brutal. And you and you're gonna join a tribe that's already meshed and voted someone off after they get back from tribal council. That's you should have said, so that's what I think. You should have said spoiler before you did all that because you I think you just predicted what's gonna happen this week. Well, it ain't a spoiler because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know. I think that's got a good chance. I yeah. like that. Maybe so. Maybe you were so. thinking about this. I should have thought about it before. We yeah. <laughs> All right, so what's your... Uh, by the way, I can't wait for Better Call Saul tonight. It's got to be better than last week. That's why week. I'm glad we're doing this now, so I'm free for yeah, Better okay. Call Saul. So what's since, your topic since for tonight? You, since you asked, I'm wearing this coat because everything <coughs> in this house is so hot, and I'm not. Right, because you're so, sick. I'm still sick. Um, I just finished reading this. The Walking Dead? Yeah, The Walking Dead comic yes. book. It's the third compendium. It's like a... It's like oh my God, wait! That's not a comic book. That's, no, that's a... That's a compilation of about 40 comics. Wow. There's three of them out, and I've got two and three. I don't have one yet. Yeah, that's how thick it is. So you read them out of order? No, no, no. I read one because somebody loaned me one because he didn't – I just couldn't get – wasn't going to start the show. He said, (laughs) read read the first one, and if you still don't like it, don't watch the show because you won't like it. Oh, right. I said, okay. I read the first book this size in Uh about a week, if not less. Of course, it's a comic book, so it's... It's a comic, but it moves really quick. Right. You know, scenes move really quick. Then I bought the second one, and the third one I got for Father's Day last year, for yeah. Christmas this year, and I finally yeah. got around, because I had to go back and finish reading something. Right. I keep waiting for it to get boring. Boy, this is probably one of the best comics I've ever read. It just yeah. doesn't get boring. And it's all about survival. It's not about the zombies. It's about survival. Is it better than the show? Um... Only in a sense that you can't get as personal with a comic as you can with the show. Yeah. But the, but the show just takes longer to get to places where the comic moves quicker. Yeah. I think I might like the comic. I think you might too. Maybe I'll buy you the first one, then you can send it to me when you're finished. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll mail that. you the second and third one. Yeah. That's do that. You do. You, I think you'd like it. But anyway, that's not my topic. Oh. Uh, um, <laughs> I just wanted to give it a plug that you should be watching it. But anyway, because we can talk about it. But anyway, no, I don't want to watch it. You would probably not like it as much as Better Call Saul. I'll say that. All right. But um, I wanted to, to, the topic that popped into my head last week was Easter productions. Oh, and yeah, I was thinking yeah. about pranks and favorite memories. Uh-huh. And the, it hit me today when I was thinking about, what was, I was trying to remember what my topic was for tonight. And my favorite memory from ever from an Easter production was not Terry falling down the stairs. No, that was wife. hilarious, was, though. Not the way you put it on video where she did it like six times in a row. I oh, And I gave it to y'all. It didn't show it to anybody else. And, and you almost got fired. Yeah, she uh, was not happy she, about that. She's texting me right now, so I got to hurry up and answer your <laughs> But my favorite memory from any Easter production was the fact that you and I became friends right. over an Easter production. Right. You rewrote a script that was written for a male and female characters, a male, <laughs> soldier, a male Roman soldier and a female Jewish character, and you rewrote it to a male Roman soldier and a male Jewish friend who knew each other, which... Yeah, like they grew up actually, together. I don't know if that actually would have happened. Sure. Grew up together. Of course it's it would. Years, it's 20 years ago, so it doesn't really matter now. Yeah. But I love the fact that I knew what I was doing. I know how to read a script. I know how to act. And you had to come on the stage and say, that's not how I wrote it. That's not what I meant. <laughs> this is how I want you to say it. And I'm thinking, well, why don't you just come up here and do it? Oh, did you really? I'm thinking, I know how to read a script. 
And then I listened to you and I'm like, okay, I didn't think about that at all. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get that connotation from it at all. Yeah. But the way you said it, that makes a lot of sense. And I loved it after that. It wasn't just a script. Right. It was your personal writing in, in the yeah. way you wanted it said. And I'm right. like, okay, for now, and I'll just shut up and listen to the guy who's leading me. Uh, so, but it was funny because after that, we started spending more time hanging out. Right. And, and once our families got together, it was over. Yeah, it you was know, over. We were, we were glue since then. Yeah. So, so that's my favorite memory. It's not my favorite prank, but it's still my favorite memory of all the productions because that's when you and I became buds. If awesome. it hadn't been for that one production, who yeah. knows or how soon we would have become friends. Yeah. My favorite mem- – can, can I tell you my favorite memory? Yes, that's what I want to hear. My favorite memory is – okay, so I had taken the passage of Scripture where Jesus really gets onto the Pharisees. I mean, even kind of mocks them a little bit, you know, and mm-hmm. kind of makes the crowd laugh, right? Yeah. So he's around all the – all the uh, Jewish people, and they're all la- and they're all being taught by him. So he's got all these kids around him, and the Pharisees come and they and they challenge him in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. And he's not. I mean, and he like. Well, anyway, just go read the scripture. But what I loved about it was, <coughs> so here we are directing. It's a very serious scene. Jesus is like, you know, y'all are do this, but you're just a brood of vipers and all this kind of stuff, and. Um, uh, and all of a sudden, all the Pharisees pull out pillows. That was start, you. Okay, I couldn't remember if that was and you. Start, and start beating up on Jesus. And, the, and, then, then the, and then all the disciples pull out pillows. And it's this huge <laughs> pillow fight in the middle of the, of, the, of the production rehearsal. It was absolutely hilarious. That was one of my favorites. Another good one was Terry. Terry and some of the ladies got together a chicken dance. Yes, for, I remember I that. It, I think it was the wedding scene. Yes. And, and they were serving. All of a sudden, this music started, and you just went. What? <laughs> and all of a sudden, you saw the stage just went. <sighs> dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. That was Yeah, good. yeah. By the way, speaking of uh, stuff like that, I am going to have my two songs that I've written, Only mm-hmm. You, which is uh, <laughs> Only You, comma, I've Come to Worship, and uh, in parentheses, I mean. And then the first one... Um, uh, what's the first one? Will you surrender? Mm-hmm. I'm having them. I'm going to go to Nashville and record them in a studio and go ahead and get them on iTunes and stuff. Oh, and that way, the... that way it'll be easier for the song to get out. Are your services streamed? Uh-huh. What's your church website? LindsayLane.org. L-I-N-D-S-A-Y.org. Right, well, Lindsay ours is, Lane. Ours is GoDeepCreek.com. And ours go! is streamed too. Yeah. Exactly. It looks like God at first because yeah. it's G-O-D, but it's GoDeepCreek.com. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, we had a combined service. Do you remember those? Yeah, I remember those. We yeah. together. Mm-hmm. And I actually sang at the beginning. Oh, so cool. So y'all heard Dwayne sing. So if you want to hear me sing, you can go watch that service. It was on the, I want to say it was the end of February. Yeah. But I sang at the beginning of it, and then we're in it for the rest of the service. But that was really good. But our our, our service should also be streamed. So, Timothy! Timothy! Dude, Here. don't let your girlfriend drive the car near the mailbox. Hold on. What? All right, I'm I'm literally done in two minutes. If that. Okay. All right, I gotta go, buddy. He goes. Anyway. I, he goes. I need you to mute this. This is serious. Yeah, you better just get off. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all, tell us what you think in the comments. Uh, we'd love to keep the conversation going. Bye, everybody. <laughs>